It happened an age ago. But when I recall, I see it true. On a night of wintry fog, the rune of death was stolen. A witch is a woman thought to have magical powers, using them to help or harm others, but more commonly the latter. Most usage of the word and its forms have negative connotations, bewitched, witchcraft, witchery, and so forth. But witch is Rani, benevolent or malevolent, or something else entirely. She boldly lays her ambitions before the tarnished, but makes little suggestions as to whether or not they are the right thing to do, just what she intends to do. Perhaps today we can unravel some of the Lunar Princess's mysteries. Let's start with names, shall we? Keep in mind to take all of this with a grain of salt too. The name Rani, as it exists in Elden Ring, does not seem to directly correspond to any real name I could find. I know of the theory that George R. R. Martin put in a lot of R and M characters because of his own initials, but I don't put much stock in that, and he has denied that himself. There are names of similar spelling to Rani, if different pronunciation. One such means Queen, for example. Curiously enough, perhaps the nearest might be the name René, or René in French. This comes from the Latin Renatus, or Renatus, a name with a spiritual meaning, that to be born again through baptism and holy water. Interesting when you consider Rani's mother, Renala, no? Renala itself seems to be a made-up name, although a little research did come up with the supposed name Renella, which ostensibly also means rebirth, although the etymology there was not satisfactory for me. Finally, we have the last name, and the first Rani uses when speaking to us, Rena. Apparently, this too stems from the same Latin origin of rebirth. On that note, why don't we discuss Rena next? For the witch never elaborates upon her description. We can rightly assume that she gave us a false name, as Rani has been in hiding for quite some time. This would suggest to me that Rena was never her real name. Some have suggested that it could have been a name she bore prior to her death or prior to some rebirth at Renala's hands. I find this unlikely for several reasons. First off, if you were in hiding, why would you call yourself by what was effectively your childhood name? More so, many characters in the game speak of Rani, and even if they do not know where she hides, they know her name. How could they know that if Rani was a name she took after her death? It is my opinion that Rena is the witch that Rani encountered in her youth. Take a look at this. Rani went into hiding using the body of a doll that was based on the appearance of her old secret mentor, and introduced herself with a different name. Wouldn't it stand to reason that she used a name to match the appearance? Still, it isn't conclusive by any means, that's just how I look at it. Do let me know what you think. But what about Rani? Perhaps we jumped the gun a little bit here. So let's look at her story, or at least that which we know for certain. Rani was born to Queen Renala of Rhea Lucaria, and her father was Radagon. Judging from the corpse the Tarnished can find, it seems likely that Rani inherited Radagon's famous red hair, as did her brother Radan. And like many prominent figures in the setting, she had a stature far above a normal person. Rani's original body easily being two, perhaps even three times the size of the Tarnished. Compared to her brother, Radan, we know relatively little of Rani's younger days, only that she encountered a snow witch deep within the woods. She also encountered a moon, just like her mother Renala did before her. And whether or not you think the witch is the moon and they are somehow the same being, well, there were differences between Renala's moon and Rani's dark moon, but again, whether those are separate entities or merely changing per the viewer is hard to say. It is said that Rani beheld a cold and dark moon, and it is suggested there is some meaning behind the moon or moons in Elden Ring. Ignoring its massive scale, how it permanently dominates the sky, the moon appears to be etched with some sort of rune, and more so than that, high up in Liernia, upon the moonlight altar, we can see what appears to be another moon. And keep that in mind, 
with this. Whether or not this second moon is the lost black moon, well that's up for debate, but it does establish that there is certainly something going on with moons, even if we take it more symbolically, as opposed to literal hidden or lost moons. But speaking of how the moon of Noxtella was the guide of stars, that is interesting to combine with what Selen tells us. The stars alter the fate of the Carian royal family, and the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations, and in a crushing victory, arrested their cycles. Of course, Rani and Radan are both members of the Carian royals. But why are they, and perhaps they alone, the Carian royals, so controlled or affected by the stars? Nevertheless, the moon and the earth tree are both powerful symbols. Whilst the earth tree is the domain of the Elden Beast, what does that make the moon? Is it, or are they, if there is more than one, outer gods, seeking to spread their influence upon the lands between? Was it Rena or the Dark Moon that gave Rani her life skull, which she tells us in rather plain terms? I am the witch Rani. I stole death long ago, and search now for the dark path, that I might one day upend the whole of it, and rid the world of all that came before. Indeed, Rani was the one who set many of the events into motion in Elden Ring. She stole a fragment of the god-slaying Black Flame and imbued it into the knives of the assassins who went on to murder demigods, including Godwin the Golden. Unfortunately, Rani never elaborates upon this in detail, considering the connection between Marika and the assassins, Marika and the Eternal City, specifically the Nox. Some believe she worked with Rani on this, but it is also possible that Rani learned of an existing scheme and co-opted it for her own means, or perhaps Marika was entirely clueless as to the situation. When Godwin was slain, Rani slew herself at the same time. The curse mark of death that should have formed a circle was instead a half wheel. Rani's flesh perished, whereas Godwin's flesh survived with only his soul being slain. Thus Rani's soul lived on, taking the body of a doll, and Godwin's flesh became the Prince of Death, whose corruption appears to be spreading throughout the lands between, via the roots of the Erd Tree. Much, much later, the Tarnished can encounter Rani and her cohorts, Blythe and Eiji, and like most Lyernians, they all have Welsh accents. Did you notice? Lyernians have Welsh accents, Godfrey has a Cornish accent, and yet neither Nefeli Lu nor Morgot have accents that match his, which is quite interesting to me. Anyway, if the Tarnished embarks on Rani's quest, she will inform them of her endgame. Mine will be an order not of gold, but the stars and moon of the chill night. I would keep them far from the earth beneath our feet. As it is now, life and souls and order are bound tightly together. But I would have them at a great remove, and have the certainties of sight, emotion, faith and touch all become impossibilities, which is why I would abandon this soil with mine order. What I believe Rani is suggesting with this rather obtuse verbiage is the following. The current order of the world will remain much the same, but the physical representation of that order will be taken far away. To use a very simple, weird example, people practically worship the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree as physical manifestations of their faith, correct? Rani seeks to take those away, not in the sense that she is literally going to upheave the tree and shoot it into space, but for all intents and purposes, yes that she wants to remove the object of faith. Life will continue, the order will continue, but those in the lands between will be ignorant of those truths. To put it another way, you might say that Rani thinks people will be better off not seeing their god, not being able to reach and strive for it. The dark moon is hidden, and so too should be the order, kept away from sight, emotion, faith and touch. No doubt she believes that is for the best, but is it? 
Could this not all be a ploy of the Dark Moon Outer God, if it is an Outer God, to claim the Elden Ring for itself, dominion over the lands between? Well, we have to make up our own minds there. But there is, I believe, a good reason for Morgoth referring to Rani as an Enchantress. She is a liar and manipulator, perhaps inheriting those traits from her Dark Moon or her mentor, possibly Rena. When one is willing to do so much in pursuit of their goals, and even to knowingly sacrifice lifetime companions, e.g. in Blythe, well, do the ends justify the means? Perhaps so, but no matter the truth or benevolence that may be behind Rani's ending, is she even aware of what her actions caused? How many lives were lost in the shattering? Is the Prince of Death's corruption spreading? It sure looks that way. Can it be stopped? Will her ending stop it? For someone who shows no regret, nor remorse, but plenty of savagery, happy to kill anything and anyone that gets in her way, discarding anything not useful to her, well, I'm not certain I'd buy that her eventual goal is the best path for all to take. But, what do you think? Let me know, and until next time, take care.